Um, today, I would like to talk to you on the subject, uh, talk the talk and walk the walk. Amen. Uh, talk the talk and walk the walk. Say that with me. Talk the talk and walk the walk. One more time. Talk the talk and walk the walk. A witness is a necessity for a designed reason. If you don't ever understand the reason, you won't ever see the power of the witness. The law of Moses declared the power of the witness to be so strong that one witness uh, couldn't stand against any one person. Rather, the, the confirmation of at least two or three witnesses uh, should be established uh, in what we call the, the, the Ten Commandments, the, the ninth of the ten, uh, uh, the Lord forbids the false witness. In other words, uh, uh, God, God sees the power of the witness to be so strong. He sees the power of the witness to be so strong that he knows someone's life, welfare, and safety can't afford for your witness to be fraudulent. If you get that, say amen. Uh, but what's the purpose of a witness? If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Well, uh, uh, Pembroke Park, uh, a witness, a witness uh, is there to answer a question. The question exists because there's confusion. The confusion exists because there is a lack of clarity and the witness is there to provide it. The witness is there because there's something that we don't understand. There's something that we don't know. There's something that we can't comprehend. And the witness exists to help us navigate that confusion. If you see that, say amen. amen. I want you to know that God has called you to be more than alive. God has called you to be more than male God has called you to be more than female. He's called you uh, to be more than a relative. He's called you to be more than a friend. God has called you to be more than a servant. God has called you and I to be a witness. If you get that, say amen. Our witness, our witness, the declaration, our confirmation, our issuance of some clarity that's needed in this world is a necessity because we live in a world designed by God that's inhabited with people made by God who do not know God. Amen. Uh, we are here because of God, Amen. but we've lost sight of God. Amen. Well, what does it mean to be a true witness? Well, if you would allow, I think it's deeper than just your words. It's deeper than what you say. It has to be deeper than what you say. Christ told us in Matthew uh, the 15th chapter. Journey there with me if you will. Matthew the 15th chapter. Let's, let's establish a good point uh, so that it'll help us to transition in our lesson. Uh, Matthew the 15th chapter. Uh, if you're there with me, say amen. Uh, 15th chapter of the book of Matthew, and I want you to look with me at verse number 7. Definitely keep your hand in 1 Peter. We're most certainly going back, uh, but we want to gather something from the mouth 
of our Savior. Jesus is going to help us. Jesus is going to show us something. He's going to teach us something. He's going to guide us into something. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse number 7, the Bible says, ye hypocrites. If you see that, say amen. Amen. Yeah, he says, you hypocrites, well did Esaias or Isaiah, uh, well did Esaias prophesy of you saying, listen, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is, watch it now, far from me. He says, uh, 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 but in, in, in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. What's the point? The point is it has to be more than your words. It can't just be about what you say. It can't just be about what you say because we all know the right things to say. Yeah, we know the right things to say. You know when you get in trouble, what you need to say, what you ought not say. Uh, uh, you know when you're, when you're in a predicament, what you should say, what you ought not say. So it can't just be about words. It can't just be about us saying the right thing. So being a witness has to be higher than just your talk. If you're with me on that, say amen. No, I'm challenging you to get that God is calling the witness to not only talk the talk, but to Walk the walk. Uh, First Peter is where we are. Uh, let's gain a mutual and collective understanding of what First Peter is all about. If you're with me, still say amen. Uh, First Peter, what we have inside of our Bibles, the letter we call First Peter, the epistle of Peter, the first epistle of Peter, uh, 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 this, this epistle of Peter uh, is essentially a circulating letter. It's a circulating letter because it's written at a time where the people of God weren't enjoying the luxury that you and I enjoy right now. Uh, 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 the worst trouble you had this morning was figuring out what you were going to wear. Say amen if you can. Uh, that, 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 was your, that was probably your greatest struggle. No, I, no, I'm being too easy on you. Some of your greatest struggle was whether you were going to come or not. Say amen if you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was your greatest struggle. You, and, I, and I'm so glad you fought and won. I'm glad you fought and won. I'm glad you fought and won. But, but there, is a, there is a time, there was a space, there was a place of existence for a specific demographic of people who can relate to the fact that it hasn't always been that way. As a matter of fact, they would declare, they would declare openly that the reality is is that sometimes uh, their greatest struggle was whether or not they would survive worship. Yeah, if I would come to the house of God and actually live through worship service, make it to benediction and to my home safely. Uh, we find our understanding in 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, uh, let's just appreciate uh, the historical build because if we appreciate the historical build, it'll help us to gain the appropriate message today. Uh, First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1, we're looking at verse number 1. If you're there with me, say amen. Uh, the Bible says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, giving us an undeniable clarity and insight into who we're exactly talking about. He says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the, watch it now, strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, strangers is not necessarily about their status of being unknown to Peter. No, Peter knows them very well. He identifies them in verse number two. If you're there with me, say amen. amen. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. He, he speaks to them, he speaks to them about their righteousness, he speaks to them about their redemption, he speaks to them about their salvation. He's letting them know, I'm writing this letter to you because you are people of God, you're children of God, but you're scattered right now and you're scattered because there's a problem that has forced you all to disperse. 
Yeah, you're scattered right now because there's a problem that's forced you to disperse. Just for education's sake, keep your finger right there and go with me to Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts. And we're going to Acts chapter 8. Acts the 8th chapter. And we're looking together at verse number 1. If you love the word of God, say amen. amen. Yeah, Acts the eighth chapter, Peter says, you're scattered all through Asia, Cappadocia, Bithynia. He says that, that my people, they're, they're spread all out. But we wonder what is the problem that is forced to spread. Acts the eighth chapter, verse number one, the Bible says, and Saul, watch it now, and Saul was consenting unto his death. What death? The death you see in verse 59 right above you. The Bible says, and they stoned Stephen calling upon God. That's all I need to know. They stoned Stephen calling on God. That death in verse 59, I go down to chapter 8, verse number 1. The Bible says, Saul, who will soon be Paul, who's going to give you the mass majority of the New Testament, the man that helped us to understand faith, the man that helped us to see the relevance of the Lord's Supper, the man that taught us there's only one gospel, that man in his old life used to kill Christians. Well, what does that tell you? That tells me that I'm not worried about your past. I'm not worried about what you used to be. I'm not worried about what you used to do. I'm not worried about how you used to live because I know God can still use you. Don't you understand that that's one of the devil's greatest strategies is he wants to always drown you in what you used to do and who you used to be. Listen, everybody's got a past. Everybody's got a past. There wouldn't be called, it wouldn't be called a present if I didn't have a past. And don't you go looking in my past, amen, if you can. That's none of your business. All I'm saying is we all have a past. But I'm telling you, don't allow your past to have power in your present. No, stand in your presence and know that if God could use a church house terrorist like Saul to craft the words that we preach in the church house Today, I know that 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 God can show enough use you. I know there are teachers in this place. There are servants in this place. There are preachers in this place. There are elders in this place. There are deacons in this place. There are missionaries in this place. There are worshipers in this place. There are praisers in this place. There are singers in this place. And you're here to glorify God and you serve a God that loves you enough today to let go of what you used to be yesterday. If you love him for that, you ought to say amen. Well, Saul in Acts chapter 8 is consenting of the death of Stephen, the man they stoned calling on God. In other words, they killed him for being a child of God, and Saul says, that's a good thing. You get my approval for that. Verse number one, it says, and Saul was consenting. Someone say consenting. Consenting, consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. What does that mean? That means it's no longer about AC. No, it got, it got real deep then, Dr. Larry. It ain't, about, it ain't about AC. It's not about padded pews. It's not about lights. It's not about design. It's not about comfort. It's not about screens. No, we've got a problem because outside of this place, there are people who want to get inside this place and they want to take our lives for serving God. Might I add, might I add, if we had that problem, somebody would have lost their attendance battle on this morning. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder who loves him enough to say, uh, come life or death, I'm going to glorify God. If they kill me, I'm going to glorify God. If they take my life, I'm going to glorify God. Well, there's a great persecution against the church. The Bible says, and they were all scattered. Someone say scattered. Yeah. Scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Except the apostles. That's interesting to know. If you're still with me, say amen. Yeah. 
Now, now appreciate this visual because if you miss this visual, you're going to miss the power that you have. You're going to miss the power that you have because you're, you're probably subconsciously giving me access to a power that you don't think you have. You're giving me access to a power that you don't think you have. But I want you to see this. The Bible says, the Bible says when the persecution came against the church, everybody takes off, but the apostles stay in Jerusalem. But I want you to know that when they take off, the church takes off. When they take off, the church grows. Well, someone would say, why is that? Because you don't have to be a preacher. I'm going to come down. I want us to connect. You don't have to be a preacher to tell people about Jesus. No, you don't have to be a preacher. You, you, don't, you, don't, have to, you don't have to labor uh, 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 in a pulpit to tell people about Jesus. The apostles, the Bible says, the apostles stayed right there in Jerusalem. And Peter, one of the apostles, is writing a circulating letter because there is church happening in California. Dosha, and church happened in Bithynia and church is happening in Asia but the apostles are in Jerusalem but there's church happening everywhere why because believers 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 made up in their mind that I'm not just going to attend the church yeah I, I'm not just going to attend the church I'm going to be the church if you get that say man so so the church is spread Peter's writing a letter back in 1 Peter, back in 1 Peter, back in 1 Peter. The church is scattered. Church is scattered. Why? Because they don't have the luxury we have. At that time, people want to kill you for talking about Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, you better stay prayed up the way this country is going. I don't know where you're going to be in the next 100 years. Say amen if you can. I don't know where you're going to be. I don't know where you're going to be. You can't stand for righteousness anymore when you start talking about what the Bible says. Now that's a hate crime. Say amen if you can. All I know, all I know is if God said it, that settles it. And it's not a hate thing. It's a faith thing. And if you know what I'm talking about y'all to say amen well back in first Peter back in first Peter the Bible declares that the church is scattered abroad the church is scattered abroad and you would think you would think that the persecution is stopped but that's not the case because even you know in your own life that anytime I I want to do good evil is I mean you know what um you, 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 you may not be able uh, 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 to find uh, somebody, but evil can find them. Say amen if you can. Uh, people might not be able to find you, but, but evil can find you. Uh, uh, the Bible lets us know that, 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 that Peter is writing this letter to this church because Peter is one of those who understands why they're scattered. I know why you're spread out. I know why you're running. I know why you've been pushed away because there has been a great attack. They're killing us for trusting in God. So they're dispersing. And they're not dispersing to be quiet as they ought to do if you want to save your life. They're actually dispersing and they're proclaiming the news still. They're meeting people. They're doing their one for the sun. Say amen if you can. They're telling people, hey, I don't know if you, I don't know if you got anything going on, but hey, we're going to meet by the river down, down there a couple of days, man. Y'all to come down there with us. Y'all to meet right by the river. Say amen if you can. I don't know what you're doing, but we're meeting over at my cousin Peter's house and inside of his house, we're going to have just a little get together. We're going to celebrate God. I want you to come out. Well, people are coming out because people are inviting and people are inviting because Christians aren't ashamed. Say amen if you can. Yeah, people are inviting because Christians aren't ashamed. They're telling people about it. The church is growing the church is growing but the persecution is not stopping how do you know that look with me at verse number six the bible says wherein wherein chapter one verse six wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations no that is that is that is i've got problems can anybody identify? Amen. No, that is, I've got problems. And I don't have just one problem. I mean, I've got problems on problems on problems, right? Like, I, like I've got issues. Like, 
like, like, like, like I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. Uh, I don't know who's with me or who's against me. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm in the midst of a tough time. But Peter, Peter puts his hand uh, uh, to pen and he's writing down and he's letting them know. I know you've got some tough stuff going on. Just like I know as I'm talking to you all today, some of you have some tough things going on in your life. Say amen if you can. You've got trouble in your life. You've got financial ills in your life. You've got people on your job that's giving you issues. Your marriage is struggling. Your kids are losing their mind you don't know what you're going to do with yourself you're doubting yourself your insecurity is high you're struggling with a habitual sin you're trying to stop but you fall and you're trying to stop and you fall you want to trust you've been betrayed you want to lean but you've been hurt you want to go but you don't know you're struggling with this on this and that on that I'm trying to find my way I'm trying to understand I'm so busy I'm trying to make time for the word of God I don't know if they're going to fire me next week I don't know if they're going to repossess the home I don't know if they're going to take the car I don't know if my grandmama's going to get off the sick bed. I don't know if I'm going to get through this disease. I can't keep affording this medication. These pills are costing me $1,000 a pop. I don't know how I'm going to navigate this thing called life. No, you've got manifold, 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 manifold temptations all around you. The devil is trying to try you. And what does he want you to do? He wants you to give up on God. He wants you to give up on God. He's been about the same strategy that he was about in the Garden of Eden. I just want to mix up enough this to cause you to give up on God but I just love the fact that when they were facing that measure of trouble Peter said in verse number 7 that the trial of your faith I know you're going through some things right now I know you don't know where your solution's coming from. I know your marriage is struggling right now. I know your kids are giving you a tough time. I know you're insecure. I know your money is funny. I know you're trying to get over that sin, but you keep falling and falling, and you want to tell somebody, but you don't know who to trust. God is telling you that right now what's happening is your faith is being tried. Right now, you're going through a season where you're going to figure out, am I going to stick with God and stand? with God or have I concluded that God is no longer real and God is not there everybody at least one time in your life have asked yourself Lord are you real Lord are you there Lord are you listening Lord do you care but the Bible says though your faith though your faith though your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What are you telling us, preacher? I'm telling you, you've got to have your problems, but you've got to hold on to your Savior. I expect, I expect the world to laugh at me when I say I'm praying for change. I expect the world to ridicule me when in the midst of my trouble, I call on God. Amen. I expect, I, I'm not shocked, but what I don't expect, I don't expect the people of God to do the same thing. Amen. No, the people of God, we've got to make up in our minds Satan's tricks aren't new. Say amen if you can. And if you're doubting in God, you're right where he wants you to be. You just got to make up in your mind that my God told me, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I know you've got a tough time, but people of God visiting friends hold on to Jesus Christ that's the best and only option that we have so we ran we left here to get away from trouble we get there and we're in the midst of trouble and Peter's writing a letter to talk about all sorts of persecution all sorts of trouble. Not even the physical, not even the physical. He, he says it's deeper than just the physical. Why do you know? Jump over to chapter 2. Jump over to chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. Jump over to chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. He says, listen, you're a chosen generation. 
No, you ain't normal. You ain't regular. Stop acting normal. Stop acting regular. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. When, when LeBron James steps on the basketball court, he ain't normal. He ain't regular. If I step on the basketball court with LeBron James, I'm normal. <laughs> I'm regular. And I pray if nobody cheer for me, Lord, at least y'all cheer for me. Say amen if you can. Y'all at least cheer for a brother. And y'all know he's just, he's just breaking my ankles down to the gristle. And I, I don't know what to do with myself, right? Why? Because on this court, on this court, he's not normal here. He's not normal. He's above average. So the Bible declares unto me, you're a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. Why? That you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Don't forget, don't forget, God's done something good in your life. Sometimes, sometimes I got to be reminded that God has already done something good in my life. God's done some good things for me already, and I let that be my reminder. In my current troubles and my current difficulties, he tells us in the word of God, if you're still with me, say amen. He tells us in the word of God. Uh, 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 how many of y'all know I lost my place and I'm trying to find it so hard? Say amen if you can. Verse 10, God bless you. He tells us, verse number 10, which in times past... We're not a people, but now you're the people of God. Why? You obtain mercy, and you have mercy. He says, listen, dearly beloved, I beseech you, strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against your soul. Now, when we hear about lust, when we hear about lust, we typically associate that to a sexual connotation. We typically do that. We typically do that, and that is a measure of lust. But you see, lust is any desire that would pull me away from God. So he's talking to the people that as people of God who's going to persecution, there's a level of lust that you're struggling with. Oh, can I just, okay, uh, let, 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 let me do it, 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 let me do it. I'm going to take mine off just for a moment uh, to help you. You know, if somebody's talking bad about you, there's a lust that burns within you. And y'all know what it is. Why y'all trying to look like you don't say amen if you can. Yeah, you know what it is. You know it's that part burning in you that wants to talk crazy to them. Say amen if you can. Some of you have gone beyond talking. And some of you don't even realize, but your fist is clenched right now. Say amen if you can. You want to strike somebody while they're talking crazy to you. Some of you just can't even hold yourself and you say something like, if you say one more thing to me. <laughs> and that person may think you're joking, but boy, you mean every word of that. Say amen if you can. Yeah, you mean every single word of that. You're letting that person know that I serve God. I'm striving to glorify him. But Paul told me when I want to do right, uh, uh, evil's always there. Paul says, I, I do the things that I, that I shouldn't do and I don't do the things that I should do. He says, he says within me, I find there's a, there's a new enemy, there's a war, and in the midst of persecution on the outside, there's a fight on the inside, and the fight on the inside says, we ought to fight back. The fight on the inside says, I'm going to slap him in the face. The fight on the inside says, if he says one more thing about me, I'm going to talk about his mama. Say amen if you can. The, the fight on the inside, the fight on the inside is striving to cause you to do something that's going to take you away from God. God tells us in verse number 10, he says you've got to abstain from those lusts because they're fighting against your soul. Verse number 12, it's not always physical persecution. Verse number 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That when they speak evil against you as an evildoer, they speak evil against you. They speak evil against you. They speak evil against you.